From advertising to software as a service to data. Across all of our programs and clients, we've seen a 55 to 65 percent open rate. Getting brands authentically integrated into content performs better than TV advertising. Typical lifespan of an article is about 24 to 36 hours. If we're reaching out to the right person with the right message and a clear call to action, then it's just a matter of timing. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast, and I hear everything production. In this podcast, you'll hear the stories of world-class marketers that use technology to drive business results and achieve career success. We'll unearth the real-world experiences of some of the brightest minds in the marketing and technology space so you can learn the tools, tips, and tricks they've learned along the way. Now here's the host of the MarTech Podcast, Benjamin Shapiro. Welcome to the MarTech Podcast. I'm your host, Benjamin Shapiro, and today we're going to discuss illegal tech and artificial intelligence. Joining us is Colin Levy, who is the Director of Legal and Evangelism for Malbec, which is today's most modern, cutting-edge CLM solution with a proprietary AI core that empowers the enterprise to do more with less. Malbec provides end-to-end contract management with seamless integration to Salesforce, Workday, Slack, Office 365, and more, reducing cycle times. And today, Colin and I are going to discuss unraveling the legal tech ecosystem. All right, here's the first part of my conversation with Colin Levy, the Director of Legal and Evangelism from Malbec. Colin, welcome to the MarTech Podcast. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to have you here. Excited to talk about a topic that I feel like most marketers are probably like, why are we talking about legal? This is a marketing podcast, but there's a huge blending as marketers are being tasked with more, not only to have partnerships, sign different deals, but also working with artificial intelligence. The legal ecosystem is blending into our work more and more every day. So I wanted to have you on the podcast first to talk to us a little bit about what's happening in legal tech and then also get into a kind of verticalized use of artificial intelligence. Let's start at the top here. Legal tech, right? We think of MarTech, all the different tools and integrations. Tell me about the legal tech system and what does that look like these days? Legal tech really is about technologies that are aimed at helping in a couple of different ways. One, better align legal services with those most in need of legal services. Two, helping the legal function overall become more data-driven, more collaborative, and more forward-thinking and proactive as opposed to historically being reactive. And it's also helping to sort of align people, processes, and technology together because the legal industry historically has been very much tied down to the way things have always been done and history and tradition and technology, I think, in many ways is upending that long-standing paradigm. So when I think about what goes into MarTech, there's disparate data sources from advertising solutions, from some sort of point of sale, revenue generation. There's a CRM. We try to collect all of this data, put it into a place where we can understand uh, you know, who is doing what at what time to send what messages to them. So there's a data input, a centralization, and then an output. Do you have the same sort of fundamental structure? Like, is it we have contract language and clients, they all get fed to a system, and then you can query that underlying database? What's the legal tech infrastructure look like on average? There are a lot of different spaces within legal tech, one of which is contract and to your point. So certainly there are tools that can help you not just organize your contracts, but also query your contracts to find specific data points about them or the status of them, the size of them, what have you, and also tools that can help you negotiate them as well with respect to particular contract language or finding some less risky approach to negotiating something or what have you. So there certainly are a lot of different, I think, segments of legal tech, one of which is contracting, which is the space I probably have spent the most amount of time professionally in, and that is what Malbec is focused on as well. So tell me a little bit about there's contracting. What are some of the other places where legal tech is supporting lawyers? Sure. So another area is on the litigation side with respect to litigation analytics, which can help provide input and information with respect to drafting a brief, the likelihood of a litigation matter being successful before a certain court or even a certain judge. There are tools that can help you draft briefs, review briefs, conduct legal research, 
There are also tools that can help in another sector with managing workflows in terms of managing who is assigned to what task for what work, what the status is, what documents they've worked on, what ones they haven't worked on. There are also tools that can help with the administration of law firms in terms of billing, matter management, document management, responding to potential client inquiries and intake of new clients. So there's a lot of different areas and they're all evolving pretty quickly with the rise of artificial intelligence that now is more accessible to the everyday human being, whereas historically AI was not quite as accessible, meaning you had to be a little more tech savvy and a little more of a coder slash techie to be able to use it effectively. In the MarTech industry, there's a couple of different trends. I want to run them by you and see if it's something that's touched the legal tech industry as well. The first one is this increased focus on privacy and regulations. We've seen national governments, federal governments, localities all make different rules when it comes to the collection and usage of data. And we've also seen some of the platforms as well, the Googles and Apples, restrict access to different data. And most of that, in my opinion, is because they want to be the advertiser of choice, not necessarily because they solely have the focus of the consumer at heart. How much is the focus on privacy impacting the legal industry and legal tech as well? It's at top of mind, I would say, for most lawyers and certainly in legal tech, especially right now with artificial intelligence being at the forefront. Because I think there's always been an understanding by lawyers to keep things relatively secure and protective, not just for purposes of complying with data privacy laws, but also for purposes of protecting client confidentiality. And now I think as we've seen AI live and breathe on data, there is increased emphasis on who has what data, who is able to see what data, who can share what data, what data is being provided to these tools and so on. And that's certainly something I've seen as well, not just in terms of AI, but also in terms of contracting and also in terms of vendors and customers working together and sharing of data because clients want to make sure that their data is not just secure, but also being seen only by those that have to see it and not just by anyone who simply works for a company that is supporting that customer. I understand that there's, as a case law, hopefully I'm using the right terms here, not a lawyer. I think everybody listening to this podcast probably knows that, where there's publicly available documents that talked about what happened in some sort of a court case or litigation, public ruling. And then there is your private contracts, you know, the things that your company has agreed to. I'm assuming that there is something in between the two of those where there is templatized contracts or some sort of a place to look up different language. The reason why I'm asking this is in marketing, you get first party data where somebody is giving you access to their data. But there's all sorts of other enrichment tools where if you get an email address, you can go figure out what the person's name is for a price. If you're working in legal and you're building your contracts, are there the same sort of notion of enrichment services or places where you can get access to different structure and types of documents? Absolutely. I mean, that has helped me more times than I care to count because I've never been wanting wanting to reinvent the wheel every time I've created a new document or a new contract. So there are a lot of different tools out there that can help you not just find templates, but craft them and access them as well to help speed up your creation of these documents. So certainly that is a part of not just legal tech, but just a part of legal work now, because like I said, well, I don't want to reinvent the wheel. There are plenty of other lawyers as well who don't want to have to reinvent the wheel either. I guess the last question I have for you is we think about the overlap between MarTech and legal tech. How do you envision or see marketers working with their counsel or working with legal tech vendors to make their jobs safer, more secure, make sure that they have the coverage that they need? I think there are definitely a different number of angles to attack it from. One is from the contracting perspective to make sure there are appropriate provisions in there to protect the sharing of data and the protection of any data that is shared. There is also the ability to craft not just solutions, but also documents to allow for the sharing and processing and analyzing of data because data, I think, drives a lot of marketing decisions and a lot of how ads are crafted to the right audience to attract the right response and so on. So there are a lot of different ways, I think, to approach it. And and I think that goes to show you the value of data that continues to increase as we see not just marketers, but retailers and all sorts of other businesses as well make use of data to help drive their decision making around advertising, around shopping decisions, around what to purchase in terms of inventory and so on. 
So how should marketers think about integrating their legal tech solutions with their MarTech stack? Is there actually a point of integration or is it still just, hey, I'm running this ad campaign. Let me go find my general counsel and make sure that he or she is cool with it. There's still some of that in terms of getting legal to review and approve ad campaigns and so on. But there also are increased integration between different tools. So marketing tools and legal tech tools and other tech tools as well. For example, a lot of sales folks use Salesforce. Well, that's closely integrated into Malbix tool and plenty of other tools as well so that there's seamless data flows between all these tools so that you're relying on the same data to drive your actions and your insights and what you try to do with respect to marketing your product or solution. You mentioned Malbec. Obviously, it's something near and dear to your heart. Tell me a little bit about as a CLM, how is Malbec different than some of the other tech solutions that are available? It's like a legal version of a CRM in my blunt description of the platform. How is it different than some of the other solutions that are out there? One thing that I think sets Malbec apart from other CLM solutions specifically is its customizability in terms of allowing for different legal departments to create workflows that are specific to how they work, how they want to work. And if something should change in terms of who's assigned what task in that workflow, it's easy to change that without having to redo it from the get-go. So that's one thing. I also think that we have a really dedicated, knowledgeable support team, meaning that if we have a customer that slash client that wants to create something new as part of their Malbec solution experience, we can work with them to do that effectively. And that, I think, is increasingly important to legal departments as they want things that are really attuned to their needs, not just now, but going forward as well. So I would say that's sort of how we approach it. And that comes from, I think, Malbec's just in general, human-first approach to working with others and that we do sell a tech solution, but it's really important for us to take account of the human element and the human need. And that definitely speaks to something I said earlier about me really being focused on humans kind of leading the way when it comes to technology. You know, the more that I think about the evolution of marketing, the more that the role of a marketer has expanded. We've gone from being primarily a creative medium to being a creative and data-driven medium to including technology. Now, all of a sudden, we're integrating with our cross-functional partners on a deeper level. Understanding what's happening with your legal team and their processes is not just, hey, I've got a contract. Can you vet this so I can sign my deal? It's now understanding what's happening with your ad campaigns, using technology tools to understand, mitigate your risk. There's all sorts of different integration points for us marketers with our finance team, our legal teams, our product teams. The role of a marketer has expanding and the technology integrations are expanding as well. And that wraps up this episode of the MarTech Podcast. Thanks for listening to my conversation with Colin Levy, the Director of Legal and Evangelism at Malbec. Join us again tomorrow when Colin and I continue our conversation talking about the impact of AI on the legal sector. If you can't wait till our next episode and you'd like to learn more about Colin, you can find a link to his LinkedIn profile in our show notes. You can contact him on Twitter. His handle is Clevy underscore law. That's C-L-E-B-Y underscore L-A-W. Or you can visit his website, which is colinslevy.com, C-O-L-I-N-S-L-E-V-Y.com. Colin also recently published a book called The Legal Tech Ecosystem, and you can find that book on Amazon as well. Just one more link in our show notes I'd like to tell you about. If you didn't have a chance to take notes while you were listening, head over to martechpod.com where we have summaries of all of our episodes and contact information for our guests. You can also subscribe to our weekly newsletter and you can even apply to be the next guest speaker on the Martech Podcast. Of course, you can always reach out on social media. Our handle is martechpod, M-A-R-T-E-C-H-P-O-D on LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Or you can contact me directly on LinkedIn. My handle is Ben J. Shap, B-E-N-J-S-H-A-P. And if you haven't subscribed yet and you want a daily stream of marketing and technology knowledge in your podcast feed, we're going to publish an episode every day this year. So hit the subscribe button in your podcast app and we'll be back in your feed tomorrow morning. All right, that's it for today. But until next time, my advice is to just focus on keeping your customers happy. (music) 